Well, 2015 has been and gone, and like everybody else, I've had my ups and downs. Off My Block has experienced a bit of growth. Uh, 30 new subscribers, 2,630 uh, views, 211 likes. There's been 27 comments and 31 videos. I'm Justin Harnish, and this is the best of Off My Block 2015. You want to see something cool? Can you see that? Oh man, it's beautiful. So I've got carrots and I've got cucumber, I've got broad beans, peas, cabbage and radish. As success stories go, this is one of the better ones. Uh, the training of the passion for it here, some of the fruit that's coming off this uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks they're going to be ready to eat, sweet, succulent and mm, yummy. Um, and also the pumpkin. Training the pumpkin up the wall and across as well as the cucumbers has given me a, a lot more room, a decent pumpkin and somewhere I can put other plants down the bottom. The cucumbers, again up the wall taking up as little space as possible and give me some nice fruit. Now weeding is actually very calming for me, it's almost spiritual. Not that kind of spirit, go away. But it, it really does sort of earth you, I guess you could say. Brings a very zen effect in your life. So the next step is to tidy up the pumpkins and the, the passion fruit and the cucumbers etc etc. Um, this was nicely tied up but one of the pumpkins got too heavy and pulled the string off. So I'm going to harvest that as well as that one. That's beautiful! Whangarei Quarry Gardens is a wonderful work in progress. Historically fascinating, botanically captivating, and a beautiful reflection of the power of community. Yeah, not a bad crop. By now, if you've been following my videos, you should have the very basics of gardening down. Now it's time to talk about irrigation, or the artificial application of water to your garden. Plain thaw with your backyard. There are several different types of um, irrigation systems out there, ranging from 
your large plantations down to your 13 millimeter alkathene pipe and joinery. Um, within this category you've got mistine and trickling etc and arguably trickling is the best method but I'm going to show you how to make uh, and put together a simple um, manual irrigation system using mistine. So I've knocked up this frame, didn't take me very long. The measurements are my measurements, so your measurements will be different to mine. But as long as you've got a fairly decent size, um, it is a shade house, so we've got to get some shade on here next. And there you have it, a nice shade house. Nice green shade house. Green and brown. Or is it green and gold? Or is it white and gold? Or blue and black. So let's go into the garden and see what we can get. This is the pack joy. It's gone really really well. Um, it's cut and come again so I'm just going to take some leaves off. That's the Scarlet Runner. Grab some of them. I would say just about every culture in the world has its form of boil up, which is grabbing whatever you have on hand, veggie wise, chopping it up into bite sized chunks, and boiling it for a couple of hours, which is what we're going to do with what we've found in the garden.
Winter is definitely on its way, but it doesn't mean the end of planting. <coughs> now depending on your climate, you can actually grow things quite well straight from your garden. If you're in a frost area where you can get some heavy frost, you might want to invest in a bit of a, a, a frost cloth and some uh, hoops. And I'm in the far north of New Zealand, which is a subtropical uh, climate, which means that frosts do happen, but they're very rare. So I can pretty much do what I want in the garden. Uh, there are certain plants that won't grow in winter, uh, but you've got most of your brassica family, cauliflower, cabbage, that type of thing, uh, that will grow quite happily. We're gonna do intense planting, which means the plants are gonna be closer together. During winter, they don't grow huge like they do in the summer. So you can, uh, you can get them to support themselves and get uh, quite a bit more of a crop going on. We're gonna start by harvesting whatever needs to be taken out right now, such as this cabbage, and filling in the spaces. When filling in the gaps, always remember to practice crop rotation. This means not putting in the same plant as you took out. It's also a good idea to mix it up a bit. Put a number of different species down and don't worry too much about planting in the rows. It was over the moment you stepped off the bus. Is it cooler to leave? Between the larger plants, you can put a fast cropping smaller plant. The ideal staple is spring onion. Cause nobody knows or has any idea about us. Tread carefully. When harvesting leafy greens, pull off the unwanted leaves into the garden as mulch. You may need to rip them up a bit, but this is a good practice to get into. putting in a bigger greenhouse. Now, most of the time the things I build are out of recycled materials, but this one I bought. Um, I don't know if it's time or if it's just uh, lack of materials, but it was fairly inexpensive and I've got a nice place for it and I want it up pretty quickly. It's supposed to only take 15 minutes. We'll see. This is the west facing side of the house with lots of tree cover so it doesn't get a lot of sun. It's a shady place, a perfect place to put a shade garden. There's still quite a bit of rubbish to be cleaned up after the kitchen renovations and I plan to recycle some of the wood.
I quit And he said, you can't go back once you've chosen the pit Man, I never found a soul who wasn't looking for me There's one thing I can tell you is you'll never be free, yeah Pretty simple really, plant and garlic. And the best part about this one is it's free. This is uh, last year's garlic harvest, so I, I saved myself some, dried them out, and they're ready to go in the ground now. I decided on wood chips and I'll more than likely use more than one colour just for effect.
Well, one of the first things I'm going to do uh, before I really get into cleaning up is to reposition my strawberries. They were down in a bit of a shady spot and they didn't really get as much sun as they needed to last year, so they didn't really get that much of a harvest. So I've got this nice little place here full of sun. Still got some spring onions and some garlic in it, but they'll come out fairly shortly in the next few months. But getting the strawberries planted in here is job number one. Start by cleaning the weeds out and removing the plants from their current spot or pot. Clean up the root ball and separate the crowns. This will give you more strawberry plants. Getting your kids to help is not only fun family time, but will teach them the basics of gardening for when they too want to grow their own fruit and veg. Strawberries are a favourite for kids and as they watch the fruit grow it gets them more excited about eating fresh produce. The rubbish pile from what was left of the old kitchen and discarded junk in the garden from the people who lived there before me is slowly getting smaller. In my continuing efforts in the shade garden I'm skimming the top layer of dirt. The idea here is to start with a clean slate. At this point the only plan I have for a shade garden is in my head, which is just fine by me. It's a work in progress, an evolving art piece.
Well, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. In the show notes below, you'll see all the links to the different episodes that these bits came from. You'll also find uh, a link to the Facebook page for Off My Block. You can leave a comment in the comment section below or you can email me on offmyblock at mail.com. Uh, and all, as always, until next time, remember, keep calm and garden on. Thank <laughs> you.